it's going to be a little bit of a, a rant video here, guys. Just a tad. Now, my issue is that of late, I'm seeing a lot of Facebook posts showing pictures of snakes chopped up, cut in half, whatever, and saying, hey, what is this? What type is this? What kind is this? Is this venomous or not? Um, the truth of the matter is we have 21 venomous snakes in the United States. Out of that 21, 16 are rattlesnakes. All right? Now, if what you've got in front of you is obviously not a rattlesnake, you can rule that out, right? Okay. We also have a copperhead. It can have different colors and uh, different shades and things like that, but it still has the one pattern. The color variation is due to the region that they live in, but it still looks like a copperhead, and there is only the one. All right? So, once you learn a copperhead, you look at what you've got in front of you, and it's not a copperhead. Obviously. It's definitely not a rattlesnake, because there is no rattle. Other than that, we have one poisonous water snake. We have the water moccasin, which is also known as the cottonmouth. Now, people will try to tell you differently. There's a lot of people that think that they're two different snakes. They are not. They're the exact same snake that go by a different name. All right? It's kind of like people that call farmers hicks. Okay? A farmer and a hick, still the same person. All right, now we have not two because there is that information online, but we have three species of coral snake in the United States, All right? We have the Arizona coral snake, we have the Texas coral snake, and we have the Eastern coral snake. Now, learn those three. And I know everybody was taught this red on yellow kill a fellow red on black, venom black, that is not necessarily always true. So if you even have a suspicion that maybe it's a coral snake, leave it alone. It's no danger to you. It's no danger to your livestock. A coral snake is a back fang snake. Even if they strike, it's very hard for them to envenomate something. So the danger is really minimum. And guys, these venomous snakes anyway, they don't want to have to bite you. What happens when a snake bites you if it has to envenomate you to get the message across that you've trespassed and you've gone a little too far? Is it injects you with this venom, okay? And it takes time to make more, which essentially leaves the animal defenseless. So it does not want to envenomate if it doesn't have to. Pay attention. Learn habitat of copperheads. That is a big one. Copperheads bite a lot of people. So do rattlesnakes. Uh, water moccasins, yeah, they bite quite a few too. But most of the time, the people that get bit by a water moccasin, it's because they're trying to mess with it. They're trying to kill it. They see a snake and it's on the water and they decide they want to beat it to get, to try to beat it to death with an oar. And you know, you shove a door, oar down in the water from a canoe or whatever and you're trying to hit this snake, it can end up on top of the oar. And when you bring the oar up, you can flip it right in the boat with you. And if you get bit at that point, it's your own damn fault. That's just stupidity, right? They don't want to bite you. They don't want to be defenseless. And biting something as large as a human has a lot of potential to damage or completely break a fang. They definitely don't want that either. That's going to that's gonna really change the fact that, you know, the way that they hunt, maybe make them unable to hunt. And then, like I said, with the venom out, as soon as they have to pump venom into you to teach you a lesson, to get you the hell away from them, they're defenseless. And then they're able to be predated easily by other things. They don't want that. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to start and ramble a little bit, but guys, instead of cutting a snake in half and throwing pictures of it up on Facebook and saying, hey, what was this? Educate yourself a little bit, okay? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. They say that for a reason, all right? You know what a rattlesnake is. It looks like a rattlesnake. There's, like I said, 16 different species, but they all resemble a rattlesnake. And they have a rattle, right? No other snake does. There's not a mimic snake that has a rattle. There's a mimic snake. There's several species here that can rattle. 
Um, that's just because they vibrate their tails at extremely high velocity in dead uh, leaf litter and dry grasses and things like that, and they can sound like a rattlesnake. But a rattlesnake has an actual rattle. You'll be able to see it. Um, so if you know what you got in front of you is not a rattlesnake, don't worry about it. If you know what you've got in front of you is not a water moxin or cottonmouth, because you're nowhere even close to water, which not all water moxins are in water or on water or near water because they are migratory. If a food source dries up, they will they will crawl across land and go find a different pond, a different lake, whatever. I'm not saying you can't see them outside of an aquatic environment. It is possible. But if you learn what one looks like, you'll know that whatever you have in front of you is definitely not a water moxin either. All right, copperheads. We've already talked about copperheads a little bit. They have a very very distinct pattern and there is not another snake in the United States that has a pattern that looks anything whatsoever like a copperhead so once you learn what a copperhead looks like as in the pattern you'll notice there are many color variations they can be reds they can be browns they can be grays but that pattern on the skin is the same on every snake very slight variation there's not a snake in the world here let me correct myself. There's not a snake here that resembles a copperhead in any way, shape, or form, except for a copperhead. All right? Uh, coral snakes. You guys have always heard, red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, then I'm black. I'm telling you right now, that is a pretty good guide, but that is not 100% accurate. If you are not sure whether it is a coral snake, or a scarlet king snake, or a milk snake, just leave it alone. Uh, like I said, 21 species of snake. It's not so important that you know every single snake in the continental U.S. It's not so important that you can identify every single snake in the United States. However, if you want to try to identify it, and you know it's not one of the deadly three, like I said, there are 21 deadly snakes, but only three species. Well, three types. I can't say three species because that's not actually true. One of the coral snakes is its own separate species from the other two. If you want to know what it is, try to get a picture of it alive or just walk away from it. Get a picture at a distance. Take a good picture with a good camera and blow it up if you have to. But leave it alone. Let it do what it does. Because I see a lot of people are killing coach whips because they don't know what the hell they are. Now, a coach whip is a snake that eats other snakes. Okay, so you walked outside your house and maybe you don't like snakes at all. Maybe you hate them. You think the only good snake is a dead snake. Well, you killed a coach whip. Guess what? That snake eats other snakes. Now, by the end of the summer, by the time things start to go into hibernation again around October, that single whip snake, or that coach whip, is another word for it, they're also called a whip snake, would have probably eaten upwards of 20 other snakes off of your property. But no, you just had to kill it. So guess what? You've got a lot more snakes now than you would have had. Guess what? They're reproducing. So the next year, you're going to have even more. Because you took a predator out of the food chain that would have helped control the other snake population. All right? Between your garter snakes, between bull snakes, between <sighs> rat snakes. We have hundreds of rat snakes. Okay? These snakes would have ate those. Leave them alone, guys. You don't have to kill everything to show a picture of it on Facebook and be like, what is it? Take a good look at it. Film it on your smartphone. You've got a smartphone in your pocket, obviously. Take pictures. Get on Google. Do your own research. Okay? And if then you're confused, maybe you still haven't identified, and you're like, it could be this, it could be this, it could be this, well, get onto a group. Um, now, I don't know if any of you have noticed or not, but when you're on Facebook trying to identify a snake, 99% of the time, your answer is going to be, it's a nope rope, or something equally as stupid. Guys, if you want to identify what could be a venomous predator, and identify what could injure you, harm you, or your children, or your pets, or your livestock, or whatever, don't go to places like Facebook and ask random people to identify something for you when they're probably just as clueless as you are, okay? Go to a reliable source. Stop using Facebook 
That's like it's like walking into Walmart and asking the person running the cash register what's wrong with your carburetor. Okay? It's just it's a no go. When you want information like that, especially vital information that pertains to something harmful or even deadly, don't ask Joe Blow. Go to reputable sources and do your investigation and ask your questions there. All right? Live and let live. Okay? These snakes aren't going to, they're not after your family. They're not after your pets. They're not after your livestock. I know bites happen. I know people die every year. But the United States, a lot fewer people die here than anywhere else in the world. Uh, and if you know it's not a water moccasin, you know it's not a copperhead, you know it's not a, a coral snake. And you know it's not a rattlesnake, okay? Then it's harmless. Leave it be. All right, I know a little bit of a ramble. It's kind of a, it's kind of my soapbox. I've been into herpetology ever since I was a child. Um, I've handled a lot of snakes. I've been bitten hundreds and hundreds of times. But you know what? I never buy anything venomous because I'm not a moron. I know what the venomous snakes are, and I do not touch those. I don't handle them because I've educated myself. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Sorry about the rant. Uh, if you haven't yet, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to drop those down below. And, uh, you know, I do answer the questions and comments when I see them. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay, and for some reason, I've had comments come across that were a week old or two weeks old or questions and haven't answered them right away. Because I don't always get the notification that there is a comment on a video. So, uh, but I do get back to you. I do always answer, at least thus far, while my channel is this small, I answer all comments. I understand why some YouTubers can't do that. You've got thousands of views and, you know, thousands of subscribers. You can't possibly do that. But at this stage in my channel, I still can. So... Uh, thank you a lot, guys, for your questions, your comments, your views, your support. Thank you for subscribing if you have. Like I said, hit the bell. I'll get another video out to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Thank you very much.